is Britain fundamentally a European country with all which that implies? Or is it, in some respects, fundamentally different from the rest of Europe? And this is a question which has many aspects and many dimensions, um, some of them quite uncomfortable and potentially dangerous for, for the British state. Hello, I'm Brendan Donnelly. I'm the director of the Federal Trust. Today, I'm going to be speaking with our chair, John Stevens, uh, about one aspect of the rejoined debate, particularly that of whether the United Kingdom would need to join the euro, the single European currency, in order to rejoin the European Union at some point over the next decade or, or whenever the decision falls to be taken. John, there are some people who say that uh, in order to rejoin the European Union, the United Kingdom would have to join the euro. Others say that that's not necessarily so. Others say that it, it would be in any case in the United Kingdom's interest to join the euro sooner rather than later. Um, where do you stand on the two elements of that? Do you think that we would have to, to uh, join the euro in order to rejoin? And um, would you think that's an intrinsically desirable thing? I think we would have to rejoin the euro. I think there might have been a time uh, before the 2019 general election, had we had a second referendum, it might have been possible to uh, rejoin without the commitment to join the euro. Um, but now I think it is inconceivable that our partners, our former partners and future partners, um, would want to allow us to uh, rejoin without that commitment, because it goes right to the centre of what divided the UK from most of the rest of the European Union, which was the our reluctance to have any commitment to the principle of ever closer union, which is, after all, at the centre of the European treaties. And the desire that our former and hopefully future partners will have to ensure that if we do return, it will be an irreversible decision. And although legally, uh, if we rejoined and joined the euro, we could disentangle ourselves from that, de facto, once a country has joined the euro, the power of euro membership in integrating the economy is so great that disentangling that is really not uh, a practical policy. So I think the, the reason why the euro is so critical in any prospects of our rejoining is the fact that it would be a signal of our being committed to ever closer union, not wishing to reverse that decision or to regard our membership as being a, a provisional or conditional matter, uh, a, a, a temporary tactic rather than a decision of national destiny. The reason why our, our partners might be suspicious or uneasy or worried about the um, prospect of the, of the British leaving again is precisely that up till now, um, our membership, previous membership, wasn't characterised by that permanent option that you're talking about. Um, how do we get from where we are now, um, a more transactional, a more uh, passing and transitory view, even among those who many of those who would rejoin? of the way the European Union works and, and this greater, deeper commitment. Well, I think this is the measure of, of what Brexit really means, is that it is confronting us with the issue that we partially answered by joining uh, the then European Economic Community, um, but then rather reneged upon, which is, is Britain fundamentally a European country with all which that implies? Or is it, in some respects, fundamentally different from the rest of Europe? And this is a question which has many aspects uh, and many dimensions, um, some of them quite uncomfortable and potentially dangerous for, for the British state. And that is what Brexit is now asking, because the only way which we will rejoin the European Union is by giving an emphatic yes to that question. We are a European country. But will that happen without political leadership? And where's that political leadership coming from at the moment? It cannot conceivably happen without political leadership. 
And there is no political leadership at the moment. And that is the point that you have this sense among far too many pro-Europeans that the tide of public opinion, the revulsion against Brexit um, is going to be allowed to wash um, without any form of, of guidance or any imposition of realism on what rejoining would actually entail. And of course, prominent among that realism is the requirement to join the euro. Do you think that um, uh, if there were uh, an attempt at political leadership based on realism, as you as you put it, um, that it might get a, a more positive reception from the United Kingdom population, from the electorate, than some politicians fear? I'm sure it would, because th there's no question that Brexit has created enormous uncertainty, uh, both at the level of what our national identity truly is, but also what our economic strategy going forward is, um, what our position in the world going forward is. I mean, th there is no guidance on these questions, which are absolutely fundamental to any debate about improving standards of living, uh, generating growth, and dealing with all the other issues that are so prominent in people's minds uh, and so obvious uh, a source of concern. And so I think that the... The unreal reality of current political debate, which is avoiding the fundamental reasons why we have the problems which we do in our economy and in our society, um, the, the, the need for, for answers to these questions, there is a hunger for that. But um, the current format of our debate and the fear of reopening the Brexit issue is such that uh, and this is all being pushed to one side. Well, the Bismarckian phrase, of course, is suicide for fear of dying. But the British identity is very much, it seems to me, threatened by the inability of British politicians to lead a debate on what the British identity is. To Absolutely. Which the very obvious answer would be, would be a European identity. Um, can we talk a bit more about the economics? Um, you made a powerful point about ever closer union and being fully committed to the European project. Um, what would you say to those people who, who say that the the economic implications of joining the euro would be, would be clearly detrimental for the United Kingdom, even if they haven't been so for other countries? Well, I think Brexit has also revealed how illusory has been the privilege of having our own currency. Because the ongoing vulnerability of sterling, which is a very old story, I mean, it goes right back to before we joined the European uh, project, um, has been a consistent source of, uh, of containment of our economic um, freedom in terms of pursuing strategies that can really promote growth. We have allowed a situation to, to, to arise for a whole range of reasons. And this goes back a very long way. Um, where we have very large structural deficits, both in trade and in our, our borrowing, um, and an increasing dependence on imported labour uh, to sustain growth. And this uh, is expressed, as we've seen particularly since Brexit, in an underlying weakness of the, uh, of the currency and the need to run, for example, significantly higher interest rates than prevail uh, in the Eurozone in order to support the value of the currency. Because were we to allow the currency to fall, the immediate in inflation effects, particularly on our imports of food uh, and, and energy, would be very clear. So the advantages of having um, sterling and of being able to borrow in our own currency, which is the fundamental advantage of, of having one's own currency, um, those advantages are declining, and in some respects, declining quite rapidly. Um, and in a world where we are moving away from global free trade to one which is likely to be focused much more on trading blocks, uh, the advantages of being in a currency of one of those blocks is very significant. You could argue that, and I think there are some uh, supporters of Brexit who, who see that the choice was between Europe and the United States and that what we should be doing is linking ourselves closer to the US dollar. I mean, that that is a debate. I don't think it's a very serious one because even the most cursory look at our 
trade relations with Europe compared to those with the United States um, would reveal that, that that would not be in our interest. And it would not be in our interest, particularly for the r- residual status of the City of London as a major financial centre. Because I was going to ask about the City of London. What would the implications be for the city, negative or positive, of, of being in the Eurozone? Well, what we've seen since Brexit has been um, a slow and as yet uh, not fully developed drift of euro-denominated business away from the city uh, to the eurozone, and particularly in equity trading. Um, But the full impact of that has yet to come because it it hangs tremendously on uh, the issue of clearing, which is still allowed in London for euro-denominated instruments. That is until the middle of 2025. But a, a, a slow shift of uh, business to the eurozone, but actually a much more dramatic one uh, to New York and to uh, the the dollar business being uh, the offshore dollar business that London had being increasingly repatriated to the principal dollar center, which is New York. And this is the problem that we, we are left um, without either status. As long as we had a major role in dealing with the euro, um, this also justified having a significant amount of dollar business in London because you had economies of scale in operating in, in, in both the currencies. We are losing on both sides of that equation. And that makes the medium term prospects for the city of London as a major financial center uh, rather dire. And the way to restore that would be to either join the dollar or, uh, but New York already is the center for dollar business, or rejoin the euro, where we would would have a tremendous task in recovering the status that we had while we were still a member. But as a full member of the currency, rather than what we were while we were a member, which was we we were the the wholesale market for the eurozone without being a member of it, which was an extremely anomalous situation, which was unlikely to last under any event. If we were a full member of the euro, then we would be able to uh, recover ground for London and make London what it should be, which is the dominant financial centre for the eurozone. Final question. Uh, A lot of debates, both in the European Union and surrounding the future of the European Union uh, have been changed by the Ukraine war. There is a view which says that uh, in order to accommodate the Ukrainian membership um, of the EU, which is regarded as a long-term goal, uh, there will need to be reforms within the European Union, which may well issue in a a, a two-speed, a two-stage Europe. Um, do you think that, that that's going to happen? And, and might it create a different background for uh, the prospect of the United Kingdom rejoining the European Union? No, I don't think it's going to happen at all. I mean, I think the principal impact of the Ukraine war has been to relaunch the notion of a serious um, military expenditure um, by Europeans for their defence. Um, and a recognition that the continued reliance on the United States is not really a realistic one. For, um, and that's not just because of the threat from Russia, it's also because of the other priorities which the United States has. Um, so th- the notion that Ukraine is going to be somehow uh, a reason for dropping the principle of ever closer union, I think, is a fantasy. And in any event, for Britain to seek to benefit from uh, the the fact that you've got a, a list of war-torn economies and very depressed economies in the Western Balkans and obviously Ukraine uh, as potential members, that there's no comparison between the two circumstances of what is required to uh, build up those economies um, and the status that, that Britain might have. I, the British have to decide if they wish to be uh, a European country, then they need to share the sense of of destiny uh, uh, together um, with the rest of Europe. And that's the decision which Brexit places before us. Are we truly a European country? And um, that is where the debate is needs to go in, in Britain. Thank you very much. Uh, a very interesting review of, of a, an important um, 
uh, element of the rejoin debate. Um, I hope that our, our listeners have enjoyed and been instructed by this debate. Uh, and I hope they'll look at the Federal Trust website where they'll see a lot of similar material. Thank you very much.